the uh, mist of God that our minds can't lay hold of. In other words, the power of God's in the numinous, and that's what she's talking about here. The orders are doing just this. The old institutions are trying to compensate for the loss of the numinous. For example, lots of people who used to sit in their Baptist churches or Catholic churches or what have you were greatly blessed. For example, Catholics were greatly blessed with the old-fashioned Mass, right? But many aren't blessed with it anymore. In fact, the church knew that they weren't blessed with it and radically revised it because a lot of the numinosity had gone out of the symbols. Uh, see, that's what she's talking about. And she says the orders do the same thing. And so they compensate it with all kinds of rationalizations. Instead of proclaiming the profoundly moving and thrilling truth that the Holy Spirit no longer speaks through outer structures and rules. Amen. He doesn't speak through outer structures and rules. But in the living imagery arising from the unconscious poet in every individual man. What a line that is. He doesn't speak through external structures and rules. He speaks through the living imagery arising from the poet in you and in those seated around you. From the ecstatic part of our being, from the poetic part, from the anima part, as far as men are concerned, from the artistic part, God speaks to us by his spirit in living imagery. For example, we talked about that afterward in the little rap session we had, what Jesus was really like. And I told you some incidents that had uh, come into my life in which God says, yes, you're right on course and confirmed me in it. For example, when I was sitting in a lounge, a little incident I told about uh, Jesus appearing uh, to the eye of my spirit across the table uh, with a wry grin on his face, shuffling a deck of cards. Well, uh, you know, that's a scandal in the institutional church. But I asked God sincerely from my heart, am I on the track or off the track? And he says, you're right on, brother. He told me to do that. And then we compared notes with another good sister here that not all of us have to be the same. There's a John the Baptist and Jesus, and they had diametrically opposite lifestyles, but both were full of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And God isn't calling you to be somebody else. He's calling you to be the real you. But it is an interesting adventure to find the real you. It involves the death of the old you, which isn't pleasant. And so he that loves his life loses it. He that loses his life finds it. Now, uh, let, was that bro is that brother here tonight, I didn't see him right off, who gave me that beautiful dream about the new wine this morning afterward, told me about his dream last night. Are you here? Well, I'll do it without his permission then, if he's not here. Uh, but it's not a secret dream anyway. It's a beautiful dream. He said last night he had a dream. God speaks to us in dreams, of course. That is when we're relaxed and our ego's out of the way, and sometimes that's the only time God can speak to some of us. But it's great to have God speak to us in dreams. And he said, last night I dreamed that someone was giving me a shampoo with new wine. How about that? Washing my hair in new wine. What a symbol. I tell you, that is a magnificent dream. And he said, I was concerned lest they spill it on my suit. <laughs> And, you know, we're always reticent when God does new things. But why should he have had that dream before he came to hear yeah. definitely the flow of the Spirit in new wine this morning? That's the hand of God speaking to him. And he told me a couple other dreams that would say that the man's right on the track and really going on and growing in Christ. And praise God for that. But the head is what gets in the way. And God's washing his hair in new wine. That should tell him plenty. Look, you're going to get some new thoughts into your gourd here. New <laughs> wine. And that, that's a great symbol. That's beautiful. Well, continuing here then, <clears throat> William Blake, who was a great poet and prophet, two centuries ago, misunderstood by virtually all of his contemporaries, <laughs> that's nothing new, <laughs> <laughs> dared to speak and to live this same truth. For him, as for Carl Jung, the establishment of individual identity was the whole meaning of creation. Amen. God wants you to know who you are in new creation, and that 